Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Patty, and welcome back to the second part of my coffee discussion. And if you missed the first video, I'll link it in the description box below, and I'll try to put it somewhere up here in the cards, in the I cards. Um, but the first video was all about whether coffee is healthy for you or not. And I'm sure like many health questions, some of you out there have been confused about, is, health, is coffee healthy for you? Is it unhealthy? Should I drink it? Should I not? So if you've been curious about those questions, feel free to watch the first video, and hopefully that will help you come to a conclusion conclusion about whether coffee is appropriate for you. However, if you're drinking coffee now, whether you tolerate it really well, you've got good liver detox, you're not having side effects from it, or you just plain enjoy it and love the taste and aren't ready to uh, let it go from your lifestyle right now, or maybe you're someone who wants to reduce coffee or knows that maybe it's not the best thing for your hormonal system or your blood sugar system or your digestive system, but you're just not quite there yet in terms of letting it go or you're not ready and if you are any of these uh, in any of these categories then continue watching and we'll talk about how you can actually adjust your coffee make your coffee a little bit healthier so that you can reduce some of the side effects that co coffee does create in some people so first and foremost I want to talk about lowering the acidity so yes coffee has so many amazing benefits and it tastes so good and makes us happy and gives us energy but it also has side effects and one of those side effects is because of the acidity and the tannins, it can actually disrupt our digestive system, maybe cause a little bit of reflux, maybe cause a little bit more inflammation. If you're suffering from ulcers or are prone to ulcers, it can create more inflammation and uh, possibly a propensity towards developing ulcers. So it just creates a lot of acidity in your system as well as in your stomach. So a few ways to lower that acidity and still enjoy your coffee include one, actually making your coffee through a cold brew. How to do that will have to be a whole other recipe, and if you're interested in me showing you how to do that, um, let me know in the, dis in the comments below. But um, cold brew is very easy in a nutshell. You just brew coffee, just like it sounds, in room temp to cold water for 12 to 24 hours, and you let the coffee grinds uh, steep for that long because you're not introducing any heat. The water just sort of extracts the coffee, and it actually lowers the acidity content. I actually first had cold brew when I was in naturopathic medical school, and we had a wonderful organic food truck that would come to our parking lot, and I remember trying cold brew for the first first time and lo and behold I did not have any stomach issues or kind of burning or kind of that sour stomach feeling and I was like what is this amazingness and that was a good 15 20 years ago 20 years ago and now you can find cold brew everywhere even my local coffee shop I remember even just a few years ago they'd have a huge batch of cold brew in their refrigerator and if you ordered cold brew they'd pour it out of there it was all handmade and now they're so fancy they have cold brew on tap and that's just over the last couple of years so it's very easy to find in local more artisanal coffee shops um, but you can also make it yourself at home very very easily so sorry to go on a long rant about cold brew but it is pretty miraculous for those who are trying to lower their acidity levels but do be careful because it can be more concentrated and you might be getting more caffeine than you normally do so be mindful of that so cold brew is one. Another way to lower acidity is actually to get coffee beans that are grown in lower altitudes. So these include countries like Mexico, Guatemala, Brazil, Venezuela, Indonesia, Sumatra. These countries tend to be in lower altitudes, but you can always double check with your local coffee roasters and check to see uh, where the altitude is of the coffee beans that are grown. So that's another easy way to just quickly lower acidity another way to lower acidity is actually to use a darker roast and it seems a little counterintuitive when you get a darker roast and the coffee is really 
feeling and tasting kind of strong, it seems like you're getting uh, more acidity and more caffeine and just more of everything, but it's actually not the case. And darker roasts tend to have lower acidity and mildly block some of the acids in our stomach through a chemical compound that happens through roasting. So that's another easy way to lower acidity a bit. Now, in addition to uh, lowering the acidity, another way to make your coffee a little bit healthier is to skip that sugar. So if you're someone who tends to put a lot of sugar into your coffee or artificial sweeteners, you wanna reduce the sugar if possible or slowly go down uh, and definitely get rid of those artificial sweeteners. So the artificial sweeteners have a whole other slew of side effects that we can go into in another video, but in a nutshell, they're obviously chemicals. They're not natural uh, molecules or sweeteners that our body is used to processing processing and dealing with, you know, sugar is at least a natural substance that our body kind of knows what to do with. If we put chemicals into our body, the body does its best to process and kind of figure out what to do with these molecules, but a lot of times it doesn't really know what to do with them and it can lead to inflammation and illness and disease and pathology. So getting rid of those artificial sweeteners and you can definitely sub in something like a monk fruit or a stevia or um, just get used to kind of lowering and slowly weaning off of sugars and artificial sweeteners in your coffee. The other thing you wanna eliminate is the chemically non-dairy creamers. So some of those flavored uh, creamers, the French vanillas, the half and halves, those creamers and non-dairy creamers and flavored creamers tend to have a lot of chemicals in them, hydrogenated oils and things that are stabilizers and artificial flavors that really are gonna do a lot to create more inflammation, create more illness, maybe confuse your gut, confuse your immune system. So I would highly, highly recommend avoiding those. And if you can, at the very least, using real whole um, creamers. So that can be anything from, you know, even an organic milk, if you tolerate dairy, all the way to a raw cream or a raw milk. Um, and if you don't tolerate dairy, that brings me to the next point, is sometimes it's not just the coffee that's irritating our bodies and our physiology, but it can be the dairy in the coffee as well. So if you're having lattes or adding a lot of dairy into your um, cough, drip coffee or espresso, you might want to try continuing your coffee, but subbing out for a non-dairy milk. So whether that's an oat milk or an almond milk or a macadamia nut milk, those are amazing options. Be careful as a side note with the oat milk because I know it's really popular these days and it has that creaminess factor that people like but a lot of the popular oat milk brands do contain canola oil. And if you watched our previous video, Dr. Angela and I did a video about industrialized oils and how detrimental they are to our health. So not to be a buzzkill, but there's so many other options out there and just you know, starting to be a little bit mindful of reading ingredients and looking at some of the extra things that get put into the foods that we eat is really important and just doing your best. You know, the whole point of this channel Dr. Angela and I don't mention it all the time, but our channel is called Pretty Well because we're all doing our best and the reality is we're doing pretty well. You know, there's room for improvement, of course, but don't be so hard on yourself and just do a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time and just move forward one step at a time. So, if me talking about canola oil in oat milk is just like, "Oh my goodness, I cannot take one other thing." You know, set that aside for now and just focus on a few of the things that you can handle, whether it applies to coffee or other health-related changes you're trying to make. So, the, we just talked about things that you can omit. Let's talk about some things that you can actually add to your coffee to increase the nutritional value or the health factor. So right off the bat, I'm gonna just mention collagen, hydrolyzed collagen. It's really popular. Uh, it's all over social media. It's a little bit controversial whether we assimilate that collagen or not, but I do find that it can be helpful for gut health 
Collagen does contain amino acids like glutamine and glycine. Glycine is really great for calming the nervous system. Glutamine is great for leaky gut and healing our gut. So collagen can be helpful. So that might be something to consider. You can add that to your coffee and it doesn't add any flavor or consistency. So just an easy way to kind of throw something in. And I do have a video about collagen peptides. So you're welcome to watch that and I'll link that in the description box below as well. Another thing that you can add to your coffee, whether you're doing full on bulletproof or not, is just a little bit of fat. So fat is one of the only macro nutrients in fact it's the only macronutrient that doesn't produce insulin in um, our bodies so even protein which is very necessary and great turns a little bit into sugar when we are digesting it whereas fat doesn't produce um, doesn't release any sugar it satiates us it keeps us full it balances our blood sugar because it doesn't uh, produce any insulin. It doesn't cause our bodies to produce any insulin. So fat can be very stabilizing to our coffee. And what I like to use is something like this. I love this brand, it's called Adapted Fats. It's a little packet, so it's super easy. You could take it to your local coffee shop um, if you're not making coffee at home. And Adapted Fats is a blend of uh, uh, let me see here, grass-fed cultured ghee. So this isn't for you plant-based, uh, my plant-based followers out there, but grass-fed cultured ghee, virgin coconut oil, a little bit of Himalayan salt, and a little bit of stevia. So it adds a little sweetness. So I love adding this to either my decaf coffee or even my non-caffeinated beverages. So something like this, but you can add straight up coconut oil. You could add a little bit of grass-fed butter or grass grass-fed ghee, um, coconut butter, coconut oil. Um, so you can add that to your coffee just to create a little bit of um, just blood sugar balancing creaminess and you can blend it or really stir it up well. So uh, fat is one thing that you can, is another thing you can add. Another thing you can add is cacao. So cacao powder, not cocoa powder, but cacao powder is full of antioxidants and um, also adds a really nice chocolatey flavor. So you could add that to your coffee. Cinnamon is another herb that you can add to your coffee and cinnamon is wonderful because it helps to also balance our blood sugar. Now the reason why I keep harping on balancing blood sugar for coffee is that if you are drinking caffeinated coffee, coffee does increase our cortisol levels to some degree. And what is cortisol? Cortisol is stress hormone. And what stress hormone is, is it tells the body, hey, there's a little bit of stress here. We gotta get out of here. The body doesn't know whether it's a bear chasing us or if it's a cup of coffee. It just says, hey, get out of here and I'm gonna help you get out of here by increasing blood sugar in and putting more blood into our bloodstream. So drinking caffeine raises cortisol, increases a little bit of blood sugar. So that does put us at a risk of having a little bit of blood sugar dysregulation if you're prone to that. So adding things like fat, cinnamon, these are all great tools to help balance that blood sugar that might be triggered um, by drinking coffee or a caffeine. So just to summarize, things that you can add, collagen peptides, cinnamon, organic cacao powder and some form of fat. Now, if you are ready to actually make some other changes, you may want to consider, and this is not anything mind blowing, but just a reminder that, you know, try doing a half calf. Maybe you're not ready for full decaf or eliminating coffee altogether, but maybe you could do a half calf and just lower that caffeine level a little bit just to lower the stress on your adrenals and um, your body. So that would be something to try. Another option would be kind of veering away from coffee altogether, um, would be to do something like a matcha latte. So still a hefty dose of caffeine. I wanna say um, a teaspoon of good quality organic matcha has maybe 75 milligrams of caffeine. A cup of coffee maybe has like 150. So matcha still has quite a decent dose, but it also has the wonderful amino acid L-theanine, which is very calming to the 
nervous system. So you're not going to feel as jittery and it's not going to trigger your adrenals as much as coffee. So those would be two options if you're just trying to lower your caffeine dose a little bit or sticking to coffee, but you know, um, making a few changes. Now, if you're ready to make a whole switch, um, you know, obviously we talked, this is about making coffee healthier, but I do have to add in that if you're ready to eliminate coffee altogether or once in a while, um, a few great options are doing something like a turmeric latte. So kind of like a golden milk in the morning. Um, I sometimes do this. I will do, me personally, my recipe includes a little bit of coconut milk or sprouted almond milk or homemade cashew milk, some sort of um, non-dairy milk base. And then to that, I will add half a teaspoon to one teaspoon of tum organic turmeric powder and a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of fat, sometimes butter, sometimes coconut oil, sometimes a little coconut butter, which also adds a little bit of sweetness, um, a few drops of stevia, and I'll heat that over the stove or blend it all together in my Vitamix or high-powered blender, um, and I'll have that, and it's nice and creamy and soothing and full of anti-inflammatory properties, and I still get that ritual in the morning. So that's something that I will do. If that feels like too much or you don't have the energy or time to uh, make a little tonic for yourself like that. I have a couple options of pre-made elixir formula. So this is by a company called the Golden Elixir and my friend Alexa Gray actually introduced me to these and she uh, gifted me a couple and I've been loving them. This one's not open yet. I've, I've been using their turmeric one, but this one has um, uh, mushrooms, reishi, cordyceps. It's got coconut cream in it, um, coconut cream powder, a little bit of ashwagandha and chaga, so a little bit of adrenal support. Um, so you can just add this to hot water and have a nice little creamy tonic in the morning. They also make another one um, that has, let me see, this one has cacao and maca in addition to a few other adapt adaptogenic herbs, so good for the adrenals and hormone balance as well if you're looking for something a little bit more in the chocolatey realm. Um, and if you're ready to move away into you know, more of a coffee substitute, there's wonderful coffee substitutes out there, things that are chicory based or there's versions of dandy teas that are chicory and dandelion. And so they have a little bit of that like bitterness that coffee has, but none of the caffeine. And again, you can uh, find a lot of these coffee substitutes in your um, local health food store, but I also love this brand, which is Rasa Coffee, and it's made of roasted chicory, burdock, which is great for your liver, dandelion, also great for your liver. It's got Eleuthero, Shatavari, which is an Ayurvedic herb, Hoshowu, which is a Chinese herb and a kidney tonic, so great for um, the adrenals. It's got some ashwagandha, rhodiola, also great for the adrenals, um, cinnamon, and reishi. So you make it kind of like coffee you can make it in a french press just a spoonful and um, some hot water and you brew it and then you can drink it just like coffee so that's another great option and you can make that however you wish um, and then I don't have an example here, but there's companies like Four Sigmatic, which have their own coffee blends that have actual caffeine and coffee in them, but they also have uh, mushroom lattes that don't have any caffeine and have great medicinal mushrooms. So that would be another option as well. So tons of options here from everything from full-blown coffee and just lowering the acidity a little bit all the way to the other end of the spectrum of coffee substitutes and trying things that don't have caffeine and again you don't have to go whole hog all or nothing we do have a tendency to be you know 100 percent or nothing you know maybe one day a week you try a little bit of a coffee substitute or half calf or maybe one day a week you try a little bit less sugar you know just kind of lean into some changes and see how you feel and listen to your body and go from there. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and 
Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you back here and check the description box. I'll be sure to place some good information in there and review some of the things I talked about in case you missed it in the video and links to anything that uh, might be helpful for you that I can find. And I will see you back here soon along with Dr. Angela. So thanks again. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and see you soon. Bye.